Okay. Okay. So I'm going to call this meeting to order. The um, first order is just to introduce ourselves. So I'm Shameen Patwa. Shameen. I am the Yes. Yeah. It, it always helps to identify what the meeting is when the recording. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, I am Shameen Patwa, and this is the Finance and Growth Committee meeting, and I'm calling this meeting to order. Um, Josh, you want to tell us who you are? Yes. Uh, my name is Josh. I have been the administrative assistant for the Mansfield Downtown Partnership since uh, March of 2022. Tony, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm uh, Tony Moran. I've been on the town council since 2009, and I have been on the partnership board since 2011, I believe, and I'm currently mayor of Mansfield. Thank you. Steve? Hi, I'm Steve Farino. I'm a lifelong resident, uh, business owner, and I'm on the uh, Economic Development Commission as well as a downtown partnership. Prithvi? Hi, um, so I'm Prithvi. I also go by J2, and I'm a new addition to the Finance Growth, Growth Committee. Welcome. Yep. And the lovely Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs Thank no you. introduction? <laughs> Thank you, Shameen. So, um, any public comments? Shameen, could Chris tell us something about who he is and where he is in his education and what brings? Yeah, him we need a little more detail then, Chris All right, no problem. Um, so, I go to the University of Connecticut. I'm an accounting major. I'm going to start my junior year in about a week and a half. And I'm just excited to join this committee as I feel like it'll help me get an understanding of a big part of what the Yukon community is, which is Mansfield. Just me being there all the time, definitely getting to understand the financial situation of the area would definitely be a positive. Any other questions for our new member? And just to clarify, we have to go through our process. So Prithvi is not officially on the committee till the okay. governance committee recommends him Monday night, and then our board approves him on September 1st. So Prithvi, you will not be able to vote today and not count toward a quorum, unfortunately. So we just have to go through our bylaws process. Uh, no, that's no are, problem. are we at a quorum then? We are not at a quorum. As okay. Josh might have said before, you got a Mario is supposed to join us around five. So we'll see if we're where okay. we are at five. <laughs> All right, so we can't really approve the minutes then. Correct. Okay. Um, in terms of next on the agenda, approval, we can't do that, but can we review the financials? Yes, I, if, I would love to be able to do that. That would be okay. great. Um, and I know Tony had some questions about uh, LAS and parking, so I can focus on that too. So I'll just quickly walk through it. And Prithvi, if you have any questions, feel free to email or call me and I can, you know, go into more detail with you because it's a little bit getting used to the to the rhythm here. So yeah, that's no um, problem. Yeah. Okay. So I am um, and I realized and I apologize that I did not number the pages. So um, I'm actually going to jump to what I think is the um, fourth page, which is the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance, just the, the spreadsheet with the detail. So this is our end of year, um, end of year finances. Um, so a couple of things that I would mention. So if you look under revenues, <clears throat> um, you can see that our membership fees actually were quite a bit higher than what we budgeted. So that was good. So we had 16,200 come in and our budget is 10,000. Um, so Prithvi, we do have members, um, typically individuals. Um, we do require all our committee members, board members to be members. Um, it's a $10 uh, membership for, for students, I should just mention. So, um, so that's that was very positive. Um, and then when you get down to, um, and again, this is under 100% actual June 30th, you'll see our operating income slash loss. 
And so we are, we're at a loss this year of $4,890. So just to put this in context, context, if you remember from the approval of the budget back in January when this committee saw it, I indicated that we, I predicted a $27,000 deficit and that was because we were paying for the strategic plan. So we're paying street cents, um, $52,000 for the strategic plan. So that is why we had to go into fund balance to pay for some of that. We were lucky enough that, you know, we were able to keep a tight budget and pay for most of it out of our, out of our uh, current revenues. So that took our fund balance from 360,000 to 355,000. Are there any questions about? You know, oh, go ahead, Tony. Is that the major change, Cynthia? There did seem to be a change in professional technical services too. Yeah, so that's where you see that number that's at the 41,000. Okay, is so that street sense? That's me, most of that is street sense, yes. Okay, that's what I figured. Yeah. I, um, I had a question. Oh, are you done, Tony, or I'm sorry. There, there was another one around salaries but maybe that maybe i'm misremembering maybe it's the same question we're actually under a, for salaries and that's partly because we didn't have somebody for several months before josh came on so mary left in august and josh came on in march okay thank you uh my question is what did um you do to get a such a growth in uh, membership fees that's great um I <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> um, I mean, we had a couple of people, I think, give more than they have in the past. So um, there was one business that, that gave more than they normally do. Um, I'm trying to remember, but it, it's not coming to me off the top of my head. But we, we didn't have, I would say we did not have more members in general, but we had people give more. And I'm just going to talk about this with the strategic plan, but this is part of the concept that the sustainable funding working group is working on. So Tony's on that and Kyle Muncie, our board president chairs it. Um, the goal of, for instance, let's just use, since Mario will be on soon, People's Bank as an example. Mm -hmm. So instead of nickel and diming our request to People's Bank, we get one sort of lump sum up front. And then we can put that toward festival or membership. So both, it's coming back to me now. So Peoples gave more money, I believe. And then Wilcox and Reynolds gave a little bit more too. And then there was one other that gave some more off the top of my head. So this way it's easier for yeah. us to budget and we're not going right. back to them, you know, every three months for something. Thank you. Sorry about that phone. Hopefully it'll go to voicemail soon. <laughs> Um, all right. You want to continue with yeah. anything else? Yeah. So Fund 270, this is our fund um, generally for our events. So you see our movies, Winter Welcome, et cetera. So we are in the black on all our events. We're finishing up the movies. The last one for the season is Friday. Um, you know, finish the concerts in July. We still have the festival uh, and Winter Welcome. Those for the calendar year, those are the ones that, um, you know, have have significant budgets. So we're doing very well in fundraising for the festival and we have a fund balance for that as well. So I think good news on the events front. Um, and then nothing's really changed on the town square piece. We will probably be starting to expend some of that money. The um, promotion slash public spaces working group is working on looking at public um, infrastructure improvements. So for instance, some of the red tables and chairs have seen better days. So that's something we may replace. Um, you know, there's some interest in maybe putting out some more permanent games. There's an interest in putting shade on the town square. So this is one of the pockets that we would probably utilize some money before we, um, I'm sorry, for some of those things. So Kyle and Sean Vasington, who chairs that working group, and I are meeting in a week and a half. And then um, Tony serves on our executive committee. We'll be coming to the executive committee to talk about some of these expenditures. So 
at some point it'll work its way back to this, this committee as well. Um, then under the store center project analysis, so the good news there is if you read the memo that Charmaine, the director of finance put together, everything, the town has paid itself back now. So hopefully that piece of paper can go away. <laughs> Um, so there, Prithvi, there were a couple of cost overruns um, during the development of store center, um, particularly including the, the parking garage. And so the town had to front the money and then pay back um, to, to make it whole. So through the revenue that's coming in from the commercial and residential development that goes into the town's fund and then goes into the store center reserve to, to pay back some of those overruns. So we are, we are done with that now. Um, and then I think I'm just gonna go right over to the LAS spreadsheets and as- Before you leave yes, this- I'm sorry, Tony. Um, we were paying them back with uh, tax rebates, reduced taxes to cover that payment. Does that mean that there's no more tax rebates? So, I think, are you thinking about the, the seven year abatement? Yeah. Yeah, so abatement the abatement, I, yeah, the abatement, I think even on phase two is done now. So everybody is paying full taxes, but I believe, so the, the actual revenue for the, the cost overruns came out of the taxes that were coming in uh, over the last couple of years. Okay. So nobody can accuse us of reducing taxes to the downtown development anymore, right? Right. Wake Good. up. Um, I am missing a well septic rider. Hold on one second there, Lynette. Uh, oh. What's going on? I think it's something with Steve. Oh, oh okay. Oh, hopefully. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> you had a go. Zoom bomb in a while. You want to keep going, Cynthia? Yeah. So, um, Tony, you had asked me uh, some questions on LAS. So, um, just uh, quickly, their um, their net income was one hundred ten thousand for the past fiscal year, then ended June thirtieth. Um, that is definitely lower than it's been in the past, off the top of my head. Um, and I think that's you know mainly because. Um, just we've had less transient visitors, you know, since COVID. And then, you know, we have fewer businesses that are open right now. Um, the Oaks is still paying, um, you know, for its spaces, whether they, and presumably they have people filling all those spaces, the 369 spaces above the gate. I didn't know if you had other questions or. So, um... The town is still taking a fifty thousand dollar a year contribution to go into a, a reserve fund. Yes, so um, it's about at fifty eight thousand now. So it's based on the CPI, but and I just sent the bill. Actually, it's in August when I send the bill to LAS. So the town um, calculate town finance department calculated that for me. Um, there is a provision in the agreement that it cannot be more than I think four percent. So it, it, it there is a capping uh, provision yeah. that's that's in one of the parking either the parking agreement or the development agreement. I think it, it's the parking agreement. So, okay, um, but yes, we should be hopefully receiving that check in the next couple of weeks. Okay. So then that goes okay. so for Prithvi, so he knows that goes into the town's. Um, repair and replacement for any capital projects in the parking garage. So for instance, about, I think it was just a year ago, the access control system had to be redone to get into the gates, to get into the garage. So that that was an expense that was paid for out of the money that, that uh, Tony mentioned. Any, any other questions? questions? Doesn't look like it. So, Cynthia, I'm. We're at four fifty one. Do you want to give us the other agenda item, and then when Mario comes back, we can see if we can vote and yeah. approve. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I know he's in training, so um, so we'll see. Uh, 
see what happens I think there. The, the other one was an update on um, partnership strategic action plan in downtown stores. Yeah, so, um, you know, we hadn't met, this committee hadn't met since May, but the, so there's the three working groups that have met diligently um, and or there's been conversations. I think sustainable funding one um, doesn't meet as a group that much, but there's a lot of work that's being done kind of behind the scenes. Um, then there's promotion slash public spaces um, and then uh, business property owner engagement. So I think I already tapped in the sustainable funding group and what it is doing. Um, Steve, do you, can you give a brief update on what's going on with the business property owners? Because I think, I don't think we had had the social since, um, well, the social was in June, so. Yeah, so we had a, um, a networking event at HOPS 44. We invited all of the downtown businesses. There's five or six of us on the subcommittee. We broke up all the businesses into, um, or assigned each business a different person. We had in addition to having a couple of emails, we made at least one or two phone calls to each person to personally invite them. Uh, we ended up having around 40 people show up, which was awesome. Uh, it was extremely well attended, apparently much more well attended than a, another function that Hops 44 had hosted two weeks before. Um, so we were all real excited about that. Um, a lot of great networking. A lot of people got to meet people they hadn't met yet because of the um, pandemic. There's a lot of new businesses down there. so. Overall, it was definitely a big success. We're looking at doing another one in possibly end of September, beginning of October. All right, thank you. And then um, the other group, the um, promotion, public space is what I mentioned a little bit in terms of trying to do some infrastructure to continue to improve the square and some of the other public spaces. Um, the other excuse me, area of focus is the arts. Um, and both in terms of more performances um, on the square, for instance, Denise is doing a second, working on a second iteration of the Husky showcase. And that might be something, Prithvi, that you can help us with. Um, she's outreaching to, to various um, arts, dance, music groups that might want to do something on the square so I can connect once the application goes out if you know some folks um, if you don't mind helping us with that that would be great definitely I would not mind that. okay great um, and then we're also working on I'm sorry uh, last spring fall I don't remember when Jorgensen had Asian night which was an, uh, an evening of performances by all the Asian student associations at UConn. There was some absolutely remarkable near professional or professional level performances of dancers, singers, um, martial arts things. It was really remarkable. Uh, and I think if you're looking for groups to do this, to occupy this kind of programming, that might be a really good place to start. Yeah, definitely. Um, like you alluded to, it was actually it actually was spring semester because I know a couple of people that did participate in Asian Night. I could definitely reach out to a couple of people I know that were in Asian Night. Definitely, they wanted to do an event in Mansfield Square. So yeah, that would be great. I'll definitely. connect you with Denise once she just sent. Well, I was in another meeting. She just sent Kathleen and me a draft of the application. So once we get that ready, I'll, I'll send that along to you. Yep, no problem. Um, the other thing as far as arts focus um, is looking at how we can, um, how do I wanna say this? Uh, some of our available storefronts, how we can make them more inviting both inside and outside. And I'm gonna put Josh on the spot because Steve, he followed up with your suggestion on Evergreen Walk, which has done a great job. Do you wanna give a brief overview of what you found out from the, the leasing agent there? Yes, I spoke with uh, Nicole Powell at Evergreen Walk and uh, found out that the mural project at Evergreen Walk that Steve had noticed was a collaboration with the nonprofit art collective Rise Up for Arts, which 
uh, some of us were familiar with because they did the Martin Luther King mural that's mm -hmm. over at the community center. And I have some more detailed notes in an email that I sent Cynthia, but uh, it was they were going for sort of a spring summer vibe for the artwork. They're all full sized murals, from what I understand. I did find a few pictures of them online. And there were around 10 local artists who contributed to them, and they were pretty much conceptualized and implemented over a two-week span with, on two consecutive weekends, is what I recall hearing. Yeah, and that, like Josh said, they are, you can go on the Rise Up website and yeah. see them. And of course, Steve saw them mm -hmm. in person. Um, yeah. So we, you know, we have permission from the property owners to mm -hmm. do something like this. So my, my question that I asked Nicole just today, once I looked at it from Josh, is it's a $7,000 cost. So my mm -hmm. question is, was that, did they fundraise? Did the, did the leasing agent slash owner of Evergreen pay for it? You know, that's obviously the big question. So, um, but I really appreciate Steve bringing that to our attention because I don't see why we can't do something like that. And the other thing I liked that I remember Nicole mentioned was that once the murals were all put in place, they held a contest where members of the public voted on which ones mm -hmm. were their favorites and I believe awarded the top three artists who had gotten the most votes just as a way to to encourage public engagement with the space. Are, That's a nice are, idea. These, are these murals temporary or permanent? From what I recall, um, well, temporary until um, businesses move in and then they're gonna consult with the artists and the art collective on the best way to remove them. And then for spaces that are staying vacant for over a year, I think the plan is to leave them up until, at least until May, which is the one year mark of when they were first put in and then reevaluate whether they want to keep the same ones or go to different ones or whatever. But Tony, even this, though is, it's, this uh, is painting the actual glass on the front of the, of the storefront. So I would say they're temporary. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I really like the idea of temporary art installations because it gives you a way of getting rid of things that, that don't work and aren't popular. It, it could also be a way to uh, appeal to different groups. And so one of the things we've talked about on EDC is engaging, you know, different um, segments of our population. So uh, having kids involved because it brings the parents or having students involved because it brings UConn people over. So, you know, maybe it's a rise up um, funded venture for three months and then we turn it over to EO Smith and they get their crack at painting the windows. And then maybe we turn it over to UConn or you know, maybe there's a way to do it where we're engaging different segments of our um, constituents so that we can get more people engaged and more people downtown because if you're a if you're a Mansfield Middle School student and you submit a design that gets picked and you you do your design downtown your parents are definitely coming downtown to check out what you did and probably to drive you down there to actually paint it a few different times and that just brings more traffic down there so I think um, if people smarter than me can figure out how to do this but um, you know, the logistics of it, but something to that effect where we get multiple different groups in there to paint murals at different times, uh, I think it'd be a nice thing for the community. Okay. That's a great idea. I think we have momentum. So, and the other thing on the, just to let you know, is we have, Denise has reached out to the School of Fine Arts. We had a meeting with the interim dean and mm -hmm. we have asked for classes there to take on developing some gallery, temporary gallery space and some of the available spaces. So we'll see if that if that takes off or not, but um, we're working on it, so. Cynthia, is there any movement in the Genos space at all? 
Um, there's movement in terms of there's been conversations about lease that they've talked to different people about leasing it, the property mm -hmm. owners, um, but nothing, nothing concrete. So, and the French fry place opens. Yeah, I think you know they had hoped to open a while back, but I went by. I actually went by it yesterday. It looks pretty close to opening up to me. Um, Chase Bank, which is in the former Brugers, is supposed to open um, in November. And then my understanding um, from a Facebook post is that Bagel Zone is opening in University Plaza. So that's the, huh. the building that the Moskowitz is own, which will come down when the standard multifamily goes up. And I know that Sue there has been looking in for a space and my understanding that she will be in the former brother's deli space. At least according that, to Facebook. We haven't heard that, back from Manny yeah. yet. But. And that'll be Bagel Zone in the Brothers Deli? Yep. Hmm. So, you know, it's a good, you know, you get a Mansfield business stays in town and, and yeah. that's always a, a win. Any other questions or updates? Brothers Deli wasn't there very long. I never got a chance to get into it. Yeah, you know, they had, what was it called before it was Brothers? It was something else. Like, yeah, it was another deli. I yeah. can't remember what it was called. Was, yeah. it, was it Dave's Deli at one yeah, point? Yeah, Dave's Deli. Right, right. Dave's Deli, yep. So, yeah. yeah, no, they weren't here very long. I forgot long, there either. Sure. So, Cynthia, um, I'm just wondering, can approval of minutes be done at a second meeting or if we can't yeah we minutes. just have to say there's no quorum to approve the okay. minutes um yeah i haven't seen any email from mario i mean i don't know if i have i mean i could if i have his i could text him real quick to well, see if he jump it, on or we can just do it it doesn't week. seem like a critical thing. no and it no. and that's the only thing we'd have to approve at this point right well, generally, um, you will want to prove the, the financials, financials, but that's also happened before where we can just, you know, I can make a report that the financials were reviewed and there wasn't a quorum and then the board, because I don't want to wait another month for the board since these are the June 30th financials. Yes. So I want to have them for the first, if you all are okay with that. I would support that because I think um, it's important. It's, we're six months. I mean, no, it's it, we're. I've lost total track of time. <laughs> It'll be two months past. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's time to get last year's financials approved. Yeah. Okay, so do we need a motion to move it to another agenda? The uh, the approval of minutes, and no, it sounds like no, the, because we can't take any action at all. Oh yeah, that's true. We have not enough people to do anything with, even to move it to the next. So. We can't, uh, can we adjourn? We can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we're stuck we, in this meeting forever. <laughs> yes, we are trapped in this box. <laughs> so can I get a motion to adjourn? Well, I don't, or do we, we not do have a form for that? What to... kind of meeting is this? <laughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, you can't because we don't have a quorum. We don't have a quorum. Uh, oh, it's all a, right, and I guess we're adjourned. <laughs> chicken and egg situation. Thank you. And um, Tony, I don't think I did you justice in chairing this meeting today, but thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.